Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the credentials of five newly appointed ambassadors to Bahrain from Russia, Tunisia, Cuba, Australia and Burundi. The Russian ambassador to Bahrain, Igor Kremnev, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Tunisian ambassador to Bahrain, Salim Gharyani, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Cuban ambassador to Bahrain, Orlando Roquejo Gual, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His, Ma his Majesty and the ambassador. The Australian ambassador to Bahrain, Radwan Jadwat, arrived at Sukhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him.
The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Burundian ambassador to Bahrain, Isa Tamambuka, also arrived at Zakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. His Majesty the King hailed the relations between Bahrain and the countries of the ambassadors and their progress in all fields, wishing them success in their diplomatic duties of bolstering cooperation with the kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom, commending the ties between their countries and Bahrain. Also present were the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of the Royal Court's follow-up and the Chief of Royal Protocols. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met Admiral William Francis Moran from the U.S. Vice Chief of Naval Operations at Rafah Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness stressed the long-lasting and solid ties between Bahrain and the United States that expand across various fields, particularly on defense and security. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also went on to highlight the importance of continued cooperation and collaboration between Bahrain and the U.S. in order to make maintain regional stability and security. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also extended condolences on the recent passing of the U.S. 5th Fleet Commander, Vice Admiral Scott Sterney. Additional issues of common interest were also discussed during the meeting. Lieutenant General Dia bin Sagr Naimi, Bahrain Defense Forces Chief of Staff, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of Germany to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Kai Bokeman, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince emphasized the importance of strengthening Bahraini-German bilateral ties and expanding them across all sectors. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Ambassador also reviewed a number of regional and international developments. For his part, the Ambassador expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his ongoing contribution to the development of Bahraini-German relations.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met the Ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Afzal Mahmoud at Rupa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince noted the strength of bilateral ties between Pakistan and Bahrain, underpinned by joint cooperation across various sectors. The meeting also presented an opportunity to discuss regional and international issues of common interest. For his part, the Ambassador expressed gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and further highlighted His Royal Highness's continued support to bolster Bahraini-Pakistani relations. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the STW, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa attended the ceremony of the Bahraini Women's Day 2018, which was entitled Women in the Field of Legislative and Municipal Work. The event was held at the Capital Municipality Building. His Majesty the King delivered a speech that was recorded for this occasion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fi yawm al-mar'a al-Bahrainiya wa ma tahmiluhu hadihi al-munasaba al-wataniya al-atira min bawa'ath al-fakhri wal-i'tizaz atawajjah bi khalis al-tahani wa amiq al-irfan لمن ساهمت في البناء والتي لم تغب يوما عن ساحة العمل والعطاء على مر التاريخ وصولا ليومنا الحاضر فقد أنارت بمصابيح العلم طريق نهضتنا وحصنت بإرادتها المستقلة سياج وحدتنا فهي من قرأت وتعلمت وشاركت وصنعت مجد وطنها ولا يسعنا في هذا التقليد السنوي المبارك الذي نفتتح به موسم أعيادنا الوطنية المجيدة إلا أن نحي الأداء المسؤول والنتائج الطيبة لمشاركة نساء البحرين في الانتخابات التشريعية والبلدية التي لها من التقدير ما يجعلها شريكا جديرا في إدارة ميادين العمل والحياة لتبغى وكما عهدناها على الدوام خير من يعلو بشأن وطنه وكل عام والجميع بخير for this occasion, Her Royal Highness, the President of the Supreme Council of Women, expressed her sincere appreciation to His Majesty the King for his speech on this day, which affirms His Majesty's keenness for the Bahraini women to gain the appropriate status as a partner in the National Development March. Her Royal Highness underscored that His Majesty's message provides Bahraini women with pride to belong to this country, which has provided all the reasons of advancement, elevation and achievement in various sectors. Her Royal Highness noted that His Majesty the King was keen to support this initiative and to follow up on its results ever since the launch of this National Bahraini Women's Day in 2008. Her Royal Highness affirmed that this occasion has presented an opportunity to recall the gains and achievements of Bahraini women who managed to preserve and develop their results. It is also an opportunity to cherish her progression and progress and an, on an occasion to renew our gratification for her. Her Royal Highness concluded by pointing out that the highly appreciated interaction between institutions and various sectors on this occasion reflects the respect and pride of the Bahraini society for women. The event included the screening of a documentary that portrays the role of Bahraini women in the National March. After that, Her Royal Highness wife of His Majesty the King honored the women who have been members of the Shura representatives and municipal councils between year 2000 and 2014 and congratulated the women who became the newly members of this council for the years 2018 until 2022. Her Royal Highness took a commemorative photo with the attendees at the end of the ceremony.
وفي كل حال نأثر وهي الحنين اللي يغذينا ويشفي كوثر البحر والقلب مني رف كل ما الهوى دار شلت الطفل في يميني وشلت انا البيت في كون من حولي بدا يكبر ولما حملت القلم والدفتر قلبي فتح لي باب ولم تكن المرأة بعيدة عن المشهد الثقافي الذي شهدت البحر وإليكم تفاصيل نشرتنا تأسيس نادي البحرين للسيدات إقبال نساء على الانتخابات البلدية قراءة في مقالات النسائية مقابلة مع حاملة أول رخصة قيادة سلاح الأمم تمشيبة لجدان مصباح ضاوي للفكر صانع المجد بحرين وجوابيها يشرف الاحتفال بأول عيد للعلم في مبنى المدرسة الثانوية مقام عظمة قوبته بين الحديثة ما فرق كلمة مواطن بين ريال ومر الاثنين في واحد مثل طعم الحلا في سكر إنها سمو الأميرة سبيكة بنت إبراهيم آل خليفة التي تتوالى جهودها الخيرة لرفعة أهلها ونهضة وطنها هذه المفدة حاسمة ومثبتة لحقبة جديدة توالت فيها مكتسبات المرأة 2002 فانطلقت من تلك الإرادة الوطنية فهي جزء أصيل من المنظومة العدلية ومساهم في الشأن الدبلوماسي وممثل عن الإرادة الشعبية في المجلس النيابي The Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates Bahraini Women's Day under the theme of honoring Bahraini women in both legislative and municipal fields. The theme was chosen to celebrate 20 years since Bahraini women entered the appointed the Shura Council and 15 years after their access to the elected representatives and municipal councils. I think the 1st of uh, December is a, um, a date that every woman is looking for. And, uh, this year's field uh, related to the uh, poli woman in politics and uh, I am very much honored because I will be awarded by Her Highness as uh, one of the four women who have been uh, appointed for the first time in Shura Council in Bahrain.
This year, we are honored to have the celebration under the uh, banner of uh, women in legislative as well as in law um, activities. Uh, the women in over the last 18 years as part of the legislative body has proven their capabilities and their stamina to produce and contribute to development of the laws in Bahrain. The event marks the great achievements attained by Bahraini women through their effective presence in the legislative and municipal councils as well as their ability to enhance their contributions to public affairs and be involved effectively in the political work. It is indeed a great privilege for us as uh, female legislators and uh, I would like to thank Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for honouring us today as uh, legislators and uh, it has always been a great um, a privilege to serve in our uh, legislative authority uh, together hand in hand with our male colleagues and working on various legislation, drafting uh, bills before they become uh, law. Um, it, it is indeed a wonderful uh, challenge that we have to help uh, further d the development of our country. To empower the women in specific is one of the most critical items that we always have been in, in the, our agenda item. Because we believe in the role of the women in any society, not only Bahrain. The celebration is an opportunity to shed light on the political maturity of the Bahraini society, whose members showed confidence in the Bahraini women's abilities to exercise their role as fully eligible citizens for its strong belief in the importance of women contributions and the importance of enhancing Bahrain's standing in the field of women advancement. Bahrain Women's Day comes to honor the achievements and contributions made by Bahraini women towards the development and progress of the Kingdom of Bahrain in all fields, especially the political field. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Yusuf. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the support of Bahraini youth and the youth of the world in general is a high priority for His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that His Majesty the King made Bahrain a point for inviting the international community to pay attention to youth and to present ideas and proposals that will make them more interactive as well as partners in decision making and implementing plans and programs that are concerned with achieving the goals of sustainable development adopted by the United Nations. His Highness added that a comprehensive report was presented to His Majesty in regards to the King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award to achieve the SDGs, which is regarded as one of the initiatives of the Kingdom of Bahrain towards young people and serves to activate the Kingdom's global role in embracing their talents and abilities. His Highness noted that this award is the first of its kind on the global level and has been launched from the United Nations headquarters. Sheikh Nasser said that much have been has been learned from His Majesty the King in regards to the importance of constantly giving youth priority and providing them with support and encouragement. He also affirmed that the popularity uh, the award has received is due to the high status His Majesty enjoys internationally. Sheikh Nasser continued to state that the number of participations in the second edition of the award has reached 3,553 as compared to the previous edition in which the number was 663 participations. Sheikh Nasser also noted that the number of participating countries in this edition reached 125 countries, while it was 87 countries previously, an increase of 44 percent, thus asserting the swift widespread of the award on the international level. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, extended the sincere condolences of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, on the demise of the former U.S. President George H.W. Bush. This came during the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to the Embassy of the United States of America in the Kingdom of Bahrain to offer condolences on the demise of the former President George H.W. Bush. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his deep condolences to the family of the deceased and to the people of the United States of America.
of America recalling his contributions in enhancing the kingdom's historical relations with the U.S. on various levels, as well as his honorable stances in establishing peace and security regionally and internationally. Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdelhassan Mirza inaugurated today the Bahrain Future Energy Conference 2018, organized by the Bahrain Association of Small and Medium Enterprises in cooperation with the UNDP Regional Office, Economic Development Board, Jafri Endowments Authority, Bahrain Polytechnic, and the strategic partnership with Temkin. More in this report by Heb Abdel Ghaffar. Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Hussain Mirza inaugurated today the Bahrain Future Energy Conference 2018, organized by the Bahrain Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, where he highlighted in his speech the government's keen interest on encouraging investment in clean energy, in addition to Bahrain's proactivity and achievements in this endeavor, along with the most important challenges and energy solutions adopted to overcome them. We have prepared two national plans, National Plan for Renewable Energy and National Plan for Energy Efficiency. Uh, these two national plans are the roadmaps to achieve the national targets. And uh, for example, the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan, there are 22 initiatives in it. And if we do all of them, we will save the government 230 million dinars by 2025. We have already achieved 50% of that in less than two years, and the target is to achieve the other 50% by 2025. The minister also highlighted the establishment of the Sustainable Energy Unit in cooperation with the UNDP. The unit is concerned with encouraging investment in renewable energy, such as solar energy and increasing energy efficiency. The United Nations has been supporting the government of Bahrain in developing the National Energy Efficiency Plan and the National Renewable Plan. Uh, basically, the, both plans uh, are setting national targets for Bahrain to achieve. But what do those plans bring to Bahrain? Those plans are a shift in the energy mix that Bahrain has from oil and gas to renewable energy, wind and solar. Bahrain Association of SMEs focused on the underlying opportunities in this promising field and how entrepreneurs can utilize them. This is a very promising future which has got lots of opportunities and I think this is a call for the SMEs and the, uh, the entrepreneurs to capitalize on this, catch up with the future and think forward and make the best and by that in fact they will make good profits and more important than that they will make very good future for the Kingdom of Bahrain and beyond. It's really important to have uh, this renewable energy uh, policy because it really brings together the people and the solidarity of the people in trying to together work on towards a better life for themselves and for their country. The conference gathers international experts and nearly 200 representatives from the government and private sector organizations involved in energy sustainability. Integrating successful experiences at the global level with existing initiatives and studies at the local level to ensure sustainability in line with Bahrain Vision 2030. The decisions that will shape the future of our energy have never been more important and today sustainable energy and smart infrastructure are the core of discussions today at the Bahrain Future Energy Conference. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdullah the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, SCIA, congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Family and the Bahraini Government and People on the Kingdom's National Day celebration on December 16th and the 17th. During the Council's meeting headed by its Chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the meeting expressed its wishes of further progress and prosperity in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. 
On the occasion of Martyrs' Day, the council recalled with appreciation and gratitude the role of the martyrs of Bahrain and their great national sacrifices for the security, stability and development of the country, stressing that the celebration of martyrs is a national and moral duty to uphold the values of sacrifice and loyalty. The council expressed utmost delight on His Majesty the King appointing His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa as Prime Minister and tasking him with the new cabinet formation. The council also welcomed Royal Decree 55 of 2018 regarding the establishment and organization of Abdullah bin Khalid College for Islamic Studies. The council also discussed the topics on its agenda. The Labour Fund uh, Timkin held its annual consultation forum featuring participation of more than 350 representatives of the various stakeholders within the economic ecosystem in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This included the different enterprises as well as governing bodies that oversee the economic landscape and provide various services to private sector growth with the aim of identifying key developments and challenges and discussing possible development opportunities. Temkin's chairman, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, stressed during his opening speech at the forum the importance of the impact on the economic development of the kingdom as a participatory process involving all stakeholders within the economic sector. As such, Temkin's consultation forum is a key step in the journey of further improving the uh, startup ecosystems and uh, supporting the growth of the national economy and boosting productivity. Sheikh Mohammed expressed uh, his appreciation for the noteworthy achievements of the past year. He stated that Tamkin's 2018-2020 strategy, which was formulated on the basis of intensive coordination and outreach efforts with a wide segment of stakeholders from the various sectors, has made significant headway in achieving its vision specifically with regard to further enhancing the impact of its support programs as well as accelerating the pace of action as per sustainable development requirements. One of the successes of Tamkin over the past 10 years has been our responsiveness to uh, the private sector and, and listening to their needs and creating programs to serve their needs. Businesses go through cycles and we're going through one of these cycles, changing uh, cycles now. So it is, it is an important step for us to continue to learn and listen to what the private sector is thinking and, and what they need so we can adjust our programs and better serve the business community and, and the Bahrainis in general. On the occasion of the 2018 parliamentary and municipal elections, Korea's ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Hyun Mo Ku, hailed the success of the electoral process and the election's large turnout and exceptional organization and preparation. He also praised the Bahraini citizens' keenness to practice their democratic rights. Bahrain is, has become a very exemplary country in the region under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for where people live in peaceful harmony, regardless of religion, origins, and race. And the recent, the very successful outcome of the parliamentary election is yet another you know, evidence attest to that. I wish Bahrain to continue to prosper and for the everlasting relationship, friendship between Kingdom of Bahrain and Korea.